Hey guys, Aaron. We are back at it this week with more dynamic components. So one of the things that we've actually already had this request, and, and I've always been building towards it, but people want to know about having nested components and having uh, attributes inherited through multiple layers of nested components. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to build a very simple frame, like a picture frame. This same process can be used to make a window or trim for a door or anything where you're going to have a dynamic shape and you're going to resize the components around it. This is going to be a big one. This is, there's a lot of information here, uh, but there's also a lot of repetition. So I think what's going to end up happening is I'm going to go into depth on creating a certain piece and then kind of time lapse or cut to where the rest of them get done in the same way. So hopefully it still makes sense. I mean, it should. You guys are smart enough. You can figure it out. You, I'm not worried about it. You can, you can, you can do this. But uh, there will be more editing than there normally is in a video like this. Not because I'm trying to hide anything, but just because it's multiple steps, but it is repetitive. So I think you guys can handle it though. So let's hop right in. All right. So I'm going to start by setting up uh, some basic components here. When I go to create a nested component, I do want to create one component, go into that component, and then add the other component. So for this frame, I'm going to start with a rectangle on the ground. I'm going to grab this rectangle, triple click, make component, and I'm going to make the main component, which is going to be my frame. I'm just going to call it frame, and I'm going to make sure, one thing I do want to pay attention to here is the axes. A lot of this, as we dynamically create these components uh, and stuff moves around, it's all relative to the axis. So I want to make sure, not that it's a good thing, bad thing, whatever, but I want to know where the axis is. So the default for all components is the lower left corner. So that's perfect. Call it frame. Go ahead and create. All right, so there we go. This is our frame. Now I'm going to go into this frame and double click to enter and I'm going to triple click this again. And I'm going to make this into a new component and I'm going to call this frame size. And again, the axis lower left corner, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and create that. So now what I have, if I click all the way out, I have a component called frame and then inside of frame, there's a frame size. I'm going to start right now before I add any of my actual pieces of frame, I'm going to set a couple attributes on this. So under the frame, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a width value and I'm going to add a height value. All right, now both of these, one of the things you'll notice too is uh, dynamic components automatically organizes alphanumerically. So even though I added height second, it did pop up above width. Not a good thing, bad thing, just a, a thing that you need to be aware of. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my details button. This is going to be a text field. Users can edit this as a text box. It's going to be called height and I want to input in inches and apply. And we're going to do the same exact thing for width. All right, so I did that. Now I have a height and a width. Let's go test this. My height, I want this to be 36 inches tall. And my width, I want it to be 24 inches wide. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And yep, it worked because those numbers showed up over here. They're not connected to anything, so nothing actually happened. What I want to have happen now is my frame size, I want to control the X and Y length with those values. So what I'm going to do is my X length, I'm going to come in here, triple click to select everything, equals whatever this value is for width. So I'm going to click right here and hit enter. My Y length is going to be equal to whatever I have for my height. So when I click on that, you can see what it's saying is frame exclamation point height because I'm actually jumping up to the frame group and then grabbing the height from there. If I just typed in equals height, it wouldn't know where to pull that from because the height is not a member of this frame size component. It's a member of this frame component. So here I have component name, exclamation point is a separator, and then the actual field name that's in that component. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and you'll see my numbers show up, my frame resized. And remember, I can always toggle my formulas on to verify what's in there. 
pretty simple. So now if I come over here, if I create, change that to a 36 by 36, and hit 36, enter, and then I see my, my frame size, that, that base size, re set and move to the right size. Beautiful, everything's working great at this point. This is the start of what I wanna create. So next thing I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna create pieces around here, right? I can't come in and just make a single rectangle on top as I can't do. So this, this was, is a, as a SketchUp user, right? This is what I want to do. I want to come in here and I want to throw a rectangle down on the ground like this. I want to offset that, pull that up. There we go. And then put that back under there. So that's how I want to go about creating a frame. The problem is if I make this a component right now, I'm going to call it sides and I hit create. So if I take that group right now and I say, okay, for my sides, I want to set uh, the X and Y length just like I did before and, whoops, wrong one. I hit the wrong one. I hit Y instead of length Y. There we go. So if I try to do the same thing, right, so for my X length, I want to say that's equal to whatever my width is, enter, and then uh, for my Y length, I want to make that equal to whatever my height is, enter, and I come up here and I start resizing, uh, let's say it's four feet wide, look what happens. See that distortion? That was even, so this, this width was the same there, but as I resize that, I end up stretching that geometry. Uh, maybe that you're okay with that, and in which case you're good, not a problem, but what I want to actually create, and this is why it's going to take a little bit more work, is I want to create pieces for each of these sides that resize to the right material size as I stretch the overall component. So let's see what exactly that means. I'm going to use, I'm going to draw on top of my, this frame I created right here. So, there's a couple ways I could do this, and it really depends on how much variability or, or, or how much uh, function I give to this frame. I'm gonna set the ground rules right now saying, I know exactly what size I want my frame material to be. I want it to be three inches wide and one inch tall, and I'm gonna hard code it that way. Not an option to change. This is because we're doing that whole crawl before you walk thing. So with that in mind, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna start with the top. I'm gonna to draw a rectangle like this. I wanna make it be exactly, so two feet, and then I wanna make it three feet tall. So I'm gonna type in two foot comma three inches, enter. And then I'm gonna pull that up one inch. Now I'm gonna triple click. I'm going to make it a component. And I'm gonna call it top. I want to watch my component axes. I want to see where it is on there and I'm going to hit create. All right, so now I want to do the same thing, make another rail down here at the bottom, but I don't want to just grab this and copy it. This is a component, it is a named component. You can get into a lot of problems by copying components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. This is, this is one of those, trust me right now, I'll point out where it could go wrong later on. So I'm say two foot, comma, three inches again, create fresh geometry, pull that up one inch, triple click, make a new component, and I'll call that bottom. All right, and now I'm gonna make two more of these, of course, I'm gonna come in here, and I wanna snap down to, whoa, snap down something like that, and that's gonna be two foot comma three inches. I'm gonna pull that up. That's actually not two foot, but I can just grab it and go like this. Now, as a shortcut, I'm gonna triple click, grab all this geometry, 
and option or modifier copy it over here. So now I have raw geometry here, raw geometry here, and now I can make those components one at a time. Select, make component, call this one left, and grab all this, right click, make component, call this right. All right, so these are all in their proper location. So as I resize right now, if I come in here, if I come and say, I wanna make this width 36 right now, that piece in back changes. I'll change my height to 48, but my materials didn't change. So there's two steps we have to do. We have to put them in the right place, then we have to make them the right size. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with this top. I'm gonna to say on my top, there's a couple things I wanna put in here. One is position. Where do I want this to go? As this resizes, this is zero, this is zero, relative to my component, right? Because this is my origin. So the only movement this top rail will have to have is moving up and down as it resizes. Then it'll have to change length as the size changes of my width. So there's two values I have to add here. One is gonna be my Y position, so as it's gonna move up and down the frame as it gets taller, the other is gonna be my X length, because it's gonna resize this way as the frame gets wider. What's the Y gonna be equal to? The Y is going to be equal to whatever my height is minus three inches, and hit enter. Why minus three inches? because my axes, remember axes are very important. My axes is right here. My height is right here. So I wanna make sure I slide it back down three inches right there. If you wanted to, one of the things you could do is I could come into this right here and I could change my axes to be up at the top like this. Yes. And then what I'd have to do is make sure I change my attribute then to not be frame minus three, but just be the frame height, enter, and it'll stay right there as it resizes. All right, the second thing I need to do now is change my length. My length is easy because I want it to be exactly equal to whatever the width is. And enter. All right, so now we can always test. I test a lot when I make dynamic components. So let's make the width something weird. We'll make it uh, 41 inches. All right, let's change our height to uh, 39. All right, top rail is working well. I want to do the same thing for the bottom rail, except the bottom rail, I actually need to add less attributes. The only thing I'm worried about with the bottom rail is the length because I wanna keep it at the bottom always. So I don't have to worry about shifting it up or anything like that ever. So all I have to do with the bottom rail then is add an X length, and that can also be equal to my overall width. Enter. All right, so for my two side rails, my left side is gonna be kinda of like my bottom because I don't have to actually move it anywhere. Um, one thing, so my, my big important thing here, so there's two things I do want to do. I want to make sure that my end stays right here. So I'm actually, because it's not lining up with the edge perfectly, I'm going to do uh, one value, and that's going to be my Y value. And I'm just going to set that equal to three. So then it will always stay three away from the origin. Then the next thing I'm going to do is set my Y length. So how long is it? So here's where we have to put a little bit of a, a calculation here, because I want it to be equal to my height minus three inches, minus three inches. So I'm gonna say minus six and hit enter. And there we go, that lined up perfectly. All right, one last piece. This, is the, this one's gonna be the most work. This is the right side. It's the most work just because it has the most attributes. It's not difficult still, but uh, there's more pieces here than, than on the other one. So we have to set how high up, I wanna force it to be three inches off the, the origin. So I'm gonna have my Y value. 
I also have to tell it how far to come over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my x value too. So let's get those set up first. Y is, so when you see a number like this where it's grayed out, that's what the value happens to be right now. That's where it's placed. If I wanna force it to something, I have to come in here, type equal to a number and hit enter. That's gonna force it to a different value. So I turn off my function, you can see it there too. The numbers that are in gray are just what they happen to be. These ones that are in black like this have been set to a value through the component. So my x, I wanna set equal to my width, right? And I'm gonna hit enter. Uh-oh, that popped out. So I told it the origin of this piece, which is right here, is going to be three inches up, and that's gonna be the whole width of the piece. So there's two things I could do here. One is I could subtract three inches from my value, or I could come in here and reset my origin to the outside edge. And then I can, I have to force it to redraw right now. So if you make a change in here and nothing updates, that's because you didn't actually change anything that, that redrew it here. So what I'll do is I'll just come to my width and make it 40 inches instead. And we'll see what happens. There it goes, now it popped inside. Now all we have to do is set the length. So I'm gonna come up here, set my Y length, and I'm gonna set that equal to my height, just like on the other one, minus six inches, enter, and there we go. So what should happen now is as I change these values, my frame should change as well. So there you go. Again, I know we're taking this, we're taking this one step at a time, but the next thing we want to look at is, well, what if we want to actually put values in for how big that frame material is going to be? What if we want a four inch frame versus the two inch frame versus an eight inch frame? And we'll take a look at how to do that too. It's, it's a little bit more work on top of what we just did again. So we're incrementally working. You're going to have to wait a week, but a week's plenty of time to practice this. If this is the first time doing dynamic components and you're just following along, there's some stuff that may have seemed a little bit, oh, a little crazy there. Go back, rewatch, try it again. If you get, stuck or anything, leave a comment down below and myself or one of the other viewers will help out. Um, hopefully you like this. If you did like this video, go ahead and click like down below. If you haven't already, click on subscribe. This is a video series. This is what part four, I think, of our video series. And we have a couple more coming still. And you'll be notified when those come out. We send out a video about twice a week or so. And if you're subscribed, you'll be notified to any of those videos coming out. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. This whole video series is happening because of comments from viewers like you. We like to make videos, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.